Well, hello and welcome back to the studio. Nice to see you again. Sharon Hurst here, ready and willing for duty. This week I thought we'd try something a little bit different and I've called the week The Sky's the Limit. And the reason for that is because there's an old adage, isn't there? And it says that if you paint, you should paint a sky a day. And I was thinking about that and I thought that maybe that's what we would do now. I'm going to walk you through the week carefully, come with me, hold my hand and we'll start quite simply just with good old fashioned French ultramarine and we will start to paint skies, a, a nice easy sky to start with. And then each day I want to progress through different types of sky and different degrees of difficulty and I think by the end of the week you might be surprising yourself. I hope so. We'll work on it, shall we? The kind of idea that we're looking for is simplicity, to, to make it easy for ourselves. What are these techniques that make it so difficult and so complicated? Well, this week we'll touch on some of those and hopefully we'll come to grips with it. But this is the kind of thing from my journal that we're going to be trying to tackle. Okay, so are you all ready for this? I've got some good old fashioned Bockingford here. It's 140 pounds. So that's 300 GSM in old money. And I have taped it down well. It's funny, isn't it? When I look at the tape like this, it makes me think of the days when I was up at the SAA recording. And the producer and director up there, Gary Templeman, always used to say to me, now make the corners nice and neat, Sharon. Do it with scissors. Because usually you just tear it off, don't you, and stick it down. And it's funny the things that remain with you. Anyway, I'm going to use ultramarine. French ultramarine. It's ultramarine deep, French ultramarine, ultramarine, whatever, doesn't matter. But this is the most gorgeous colour for a good old English blue sky. And we need a blob like that. Don't be mean with it because we're going to make it quite dark up at the corners. I hope that's going to be enough. We'll see how we go. And the first thing I need to do really, I'm going to use a really decent sized brush. So this is my 24mm Hake, a rosemary's brush. I do love her brushes, they're all handmade by Rosemary and her daughter Simmy. Obviously the two girls don't make them themselves, you know, one at a time, it, they, they have a team with them. But um, Rosemary and Simmy are the driving force. Lovely brushes, excellent quality, fantastic value for money. So this is goat's hair. And goat's hair, if you're buying a hake brush like this, you need a brush that's going to be springy. And it must spring back, even when it's wet. So if we wet it... Even when it's wet, it must still spring back. Because some, once they're wet, you put them on the paper and draw a line, paint a line, and they come off the paper bent like that. Hopeless. You have to reshape it to go back and work in again. So make sure that it's going to be a brush that remains flat and straight. And with that, I want to wet my paper. So I'm coming into the whole lot, cover all of it, and I want the whole of the paper, all of it, shiny. So make sure that it's all covered. Look at it sideways against the light so that you can see that the whole paper shines. Now it's a fact that it will dry more quickly in the four corners and it will dry more quickly against the tape because the tape is wicking up the moisture. So it's a good idea to just come around the corners and the edges again and you want that paper shiny. And I'm going to pick up my French ultramarine and we're going to just imagine everybody that we're painting walls at home. And I know that some artists say, you mustn't do that. Well, I'm telling you to do it because I'm a rebel and I don't care. But I'm going to come through there and just make sure my whole paper is covered, okay? I know that I want it darker at the top because the zenith in the sky is always darker. So come round there and just make that darker at the top. 
And darker just means more paint, everybody. And we're using French Ultramarine, and French Ultramarine will granulate. And by that, I mean, if I bring you right in, you will see that in the paper here, the pigment is heavy and it's falling into all of the dips in the paper, the paper's patterns. You can actually see the chevron pattern on this paper. And if I move it, can you see? Oh, I've got a bit of shine there, haven't I? Hang on. Here. They <laughs> can't get away from the shine. You can see where the pigment is sitting right in the paper. And that is very desirable. It's lovely. That is something that French Ultramarine does. And it's something that is actually desirable. Now, some people don't like it. Our Mr Ford spent ages nagging the SAA to produce a paint that doesn't do it. So again, this is up to you whether you do want it or you don't. If you don't want it, you need to buy Mr Ford's, Jeremy Ford's um, Ultramarine because it won't do this. I've cleaned my brush and I'm going to dab it on my cloth and then with a thirsty brush, it's dry brush, not dry but it's damp, I'm going to come up and through. And then I'm going to come back. And each time, I'm not cleaning my brush, I'm just rubbing it against my cloth to get rid of the pigment that I am pulling. Now use the side of the brush. Like that. And then come into your blue. Don't use more water, don't get water. That's the blue on the brush. And then I'm just going to dab it so that I don't have too much excess. And if I come up through my marks that I've made, and again, more blue and a quick dab. Up through, quick dab. And use the flat of the brush and use the edge of the brush. And that should give you a very respectable sky of mare's tails. Keep the brush quite dry, really. You're using fairly dry brush on this one. Keep cleaning it on your cloth. So that is thirsty brushwork. Thirsty brush because it's clean or it's not clean, but it's quite dry. So if I rub that across my hand, it does not leave a snail trail. There's nothing. It's just a really fairly dry brush. And by using that, you're pulling colour out. And this is why we call it thirsty. It's drinking the paint and taking it back in. So I can show you a painting that I've done using that method on the sky. And then you can see what you think. Today, how about a summer sky? A really lovely sunny day, summer sky. We're going to use two blues and one yellow and we're going to fade it right down through the sky. So this will give us a nice smooth transition between dark colours up in the zenith down to the pale, pale, almost cream on the horizon. Let's see how we get on, shall we? Here we are back at the drawing board again and today to carry on with our sky extravaganza we're going to think about summer skies. Summer's coming and um, hopefully we're going to see some nice summer skies. And the colours that I want to use today I'm going to use French Ultramarine at the top of my sky and then I'm using Cerulean Blue in the middle section and down in the lower sky, we're talking about Naples yellow. 
if you think about a summer sky, you're looking up to the height of the sky into the darkest French ultramarine blue, this lovely, gorgeous kind of Mediterranean blue. And then as you look down and through the atmosphere, you're coming, you're looking through more of the Earth's atmosphere and that fades the blue out. So it does tend to become a cerulean blue. And as we look right down to the horizon, on even on a hot day, the, the light and the colour bleaches out and it's almost pale cream. And I like Naples yellow for that. It's a warm yellow. Here they are in the palette. It's a warm yellow. It's a colour that doesn't tend towards green if it hits blues. You know so many other yellows if you were to use cadmium yellow and it came anywhere near these you might find suddenly that you're dealing with a green in the sky. Now having said that you do indeed see green in skies in the summer usually though in the evening as the sun goes down. So these three colours we're working on Bockingford and I like that because it tends to be a paper that's not too thirsty and it doesn't wick the colour away too quickly and that makes life easier for us. Interestingly enough, I used Bockingford yesterday and it had a very, very distinct pattern on it. It had a chevron V-shaped pattern all through it. And this is all down to the blankets that they use when they make the paper and they lay it on a cloth, put it down on a cloth and then put an, another cloth on top and another layer of paper and then that's squeezed between a press and of course whatever pattern is on the cloth is left on the paper. Now brush wise, same as yesterday, I'm going for my 24mm hake and I was saying yesterday these are Rosemary's brushes and they're all handmade by Rosemary and Simi and you'll find that this is goat's hair and goat's hair is a good brush to use for this kind of affair. It's quite bouncy, it's not floppy, but it doesn't tend to leave you all the brush marks that a nylon brush would. And this is why I do like to use a hake brush. And our first port of call here is to wet the paper. And we're doing this because it saves us from brush marks it saves us from the paint drying too quickly so that we can't get the colour on there. It just makes life easier. And I'm going to come round and just dampen the corners again because in the corners and along the edges where we have the masking tape, it does wick the water away and therefore they dry more quickly. The first thing I want to do here is come into the bottom of my sky with my Naples yellow. And that's purely and simply because for me, it means that that stays clean. I, there's no way I can contaminate that with a dirty brush. So I'm just going to come in and lay that in like that. Nice clean brush, clean water, everything's clean. Life is simple. So I rinse that out and then I'm going to come up the sky and work in the top now. Here's the French ultramarine. I'm going to lay that in quite thickly. I want a nice bright blue sky. Like that. And then I want to come through with my cerulean blue. So I'm going to rinse clean, get rid of the excess water, bit of cerulean blue. This is a much thicker colour. And I'm going to pull that through the middle of my sky. So come up into the dark blue, bring it down to the yellow, and then just clean your brush like this and come through and gently soften. Don't fluffy brush it, swipe it, just swipe it. And that will give you these three definite layers. If you want clouds in your sky, you've got lots of choices here. We can come through with a thirsty brush, so dry it. And then you can come through and you can actually lift some clouds out. 
dry brush again. So this is thirsty brush work. The brush is dry and it will lift the paint. So that's quite exciting. So we can do that. And now I've got the colour on my brush, you can see it, so I'm going to bring that down into the bottom of the sky. Oh, not enough. I'd like more than that. So hold on, we'll come down there in a minute. Let me just introduce another... I need to clean it because it's not lifting enough. So clean it, dry it, go back in. You see what the difference that makes? There we are. So I'm going to do that. And then what I want to do down here is lift a little bit of my French ultramarine, just a little, so a tiny bit, and then I can come through here. So hang on, we're not finished with those yet. So just put the colour in like that, and then I want to come back to a brush. This is my number eight, and this is a sable brush. And I wet it, and then I get rid of all the extra moisture on it. I don't want it soaking wet. I'm going to come in underneath that blue, and I'm just going to soften it. Soften, soften, soften. And this is something that we're going to do with clouds during the week. So down here, as you look further away and you're in the distance, the clouds become smaller, clouds become thinner. So you land up with, so I'm just using teeny, teeny little bits here from the edge of the palette. So put them in, soften the underneath, and they almost become just thin lines like that in the distance. Now I've got to be careful now because this is drying. You can see here that I the paper is drying, so leave it alone. This is still wet, so I can, if I want to, lift a little bit of the blue and come in and introduce a little more texture into my clouds if I want to. I'm not really fussed about that. I quite like the effects that I've got here. So I'm putting that in like that. Rinse it, dab it dry, and then come in underneath. We're reaching the stage now where the shine is coming off the paper. It's starting to look matte. And this is the stage where I know that if I put my finger on there and lifted it off, I would land up with paint on my finger and I would have a mark on the paper. So if I come over here and I do that, see I've got a mark. And I've got paint on my finger. So at that stage, leave it alone because this, this now is the cauliflower stage. And if I put any kind of water into that, it would push the paint away and I would land up with horrendous cauliflowers in that sky. So the second the shine goes off the paper, leave it alone. This down here is dry. I know I can't eat, there's no marks there. This is drying already. So be aware of what happens and when it happens. But I've got some fab granulation on that, so if I bring you in tight, you can see some of the granulation in the blue. And this is because the cerulean blue is a very, very heavy pigment. And when I say it's heavy, I mean that the granules are large, very big granules, and therefore they're nestling down into the nooks and crevices of the paper and you get this kind of speckled affair. It's rather wonderful here as well with blue, if we can see it. But this is real granulation here, lovely stuff. There it is. Very desirable. Today we've got something a little more complicated. 
and today it's all about the when. When to go in and do it, when to touch the paper with the paint. And we're, we're going to have a little go at a sunset this time. Bit more complicated, bit dodgy, but if you just follow these simple, simple instructions, you'll have grasped it. We've got the knowledge. Shall we see how we do it? For our next project, I wondered whether you might like to have a go at a sunset. And that kind of incorporates the smooth sky technique that we've been doing, plus a sunshine and a, and a hot spot, a halo, and some clouds, some soft, gentle clouds. And I thought that this probably might be the best way for us to carry on in the next effort. I'm using Bockingford again, so good tough paper that will sit there and not absorb every speck of water that I throw at it. Give, it'll give me a little bit of time. And I'm just using three colours at the moment. I wanted to use Naples Yellow for the warmth and the gold in the sky. This is Ultramarine, French Ultramarine, and I'm using some Rose Madder. And I, I use this instead of the Lizarin Crimson. I, Realistically, this started off cheaper, but nowadays the two are the same, really comparably price-wise. But I find the colours very much alike, so I'm not concerned about it. I just want a red that mix with the blue and give me a purple. That's the plan. I'm going to have a little bit more of the French Ultramarine, because I don't think I've got enough on my palette. And I intend to use to start off by just mixing a couple of colours, because I know for a fact I'd like a salmony pink. And if I take my Naples yellow, and I add a little bit of my lovely, this is a new palette, because it's a new palette, because everything beads on it, real trial. <laughs> It's not a bad idea, you know, if you get a new palette like this, to treat yourself to a magic sponge and go all over it with a magic sponge and it kind of gives it a bit of grip when, when you're putting doing this with paint. Those two together will give me that very soft, subtle, salmony pink. And that will do very nicely for the middle of my sky and um, some warmth around that sun. The brushes I want to use for this project I think mainly two of them. I've got my lovely 24mm cake from Rosemary's Brushes, goat's hair, soft, lovely to use, and I'm also going to be playing with the number eight. This is my favourite all-time brush, this is, number eight, Kalinsky Sable, series 33. The gorgeous brush, it just holds so much paint, absolutely lovely. And I want to come in here, and as I said, I'd like to wet the whole area first to give myself some breathing time so that I don't land up with brush marks, I don't land up with paint drying too quickly. You know, particularly in the summer, it dries so fast, you can't get the work on there before you start to get brush marks. Now, mixed media, I've even got cat fur here, lovely, that's Mr Socks. Right, so I want my sun somewhere here low in the picture and the first thing I'm going to do is introduce the warmth from the sun. So just a little bit of Naples yellow coming through the sky like this. And then I've got to decide where the sun's going to be. I almost have a natural halo there, don't I? So I'm going to just come in around there and leave it like that. So that will be my area of sun. Having done that, I need to come in with my gorgeous soft pink and I'm just going to drop that in gently, gently through some of the sky here, some down here. No real rhyme nor reason to this, it's just playing. So that gives me the warmth, the pink. Now to give it a bit of a kick, I'm coming straight in now with the red, but I can't use that too thickly straight from the palette. If I went in with that, I'd kill it. It's too much. 
so get rid of a lot of it. There it is on the brush, put some on the cloth and then see where you can go with it, that's more like it. Don't want a lot. Sorry, I did it, I'm putting stuff everywhere in front of you, I do apologise. So through here, don't want to go mad with a red. Just want this lovely kind of hinty glow of it through the sky. So put it on the brush. If you're not sure, dab some off. Because you can always come back in, you know, and add it. But you can't come in and take it out. And particularly with a colour like this, because it's such a wretched stainer. And what happens now if we take the alizarin and we add some French ultramarine? And I'm looking at this rather scrumptious purpley mauve. So again, too much on the brush. Dampen, dampen, get rid of it, get rid of it. Oh, look at that. So some through there, a bit through here. We've lost our sun. Don't worry about that. We can just take a damp brush. This is another brush. I'm just coming in. Dry it out. Use water to, to pull it out. And the key really is not to mix your paint so well that it is a very definite colour. It's wonderful if you can mix it, half mix it, so that's the blue and a little bit of red. And I've kind of got both colours on my brush there so that when I come through here, the colours bleed. All right. So just a little bit, I want a bit of blue now. And just watch it, see what it does, see what it does. It's bleeding too much and if you find that, take your brush, see the different colours on the brush there? Get rid of a lot of it and just pull some of that through like that. I feel like I'd still like more yellow halo around my sun. So I'm still working. It's still shiny. It's still really wet. I can still move it. It's fine. I want to soften some of these. I don't want them too, too explosive. So come in. This is just a damp brush. Just soften it. Rinse and dab the water off. Come in and soften like the explosive idea above, but I'm not so sure of it below. I've got paint on my brush now. So it's just a hint of colour, but it means that I can drop it around. It's starting to dry up here, so watch it. This is a bit of blue. Could be Cauliflower City up here if we're not careful. I'd like some more yellow around here. I feel like I've lost the impact of my sun. So if I come and I grab some Naples yellow and I just, because it's all still wet. Because the, the, the thing that makes the sun stand out, because it's so light, is the dark that's behind it. So we need to have the depth there. As I say, watercolour is a bit of a tinker because it will always, always dry up more palely than you put it on, so you've got to watch it. I'm going for the red option now. This is red and I've got a bit of yellow on the brush. I didn't clean it. So I'm just pulling that through there. And as long as it's all still wet, I will get away with it. I'll get away with it. I want to bring some of the red down and I want to drop some in in this dead area of sky here. Nothing's going on here. That's a bit of the purple, little clouds. Red, let's go back to the red. I'm determined I'm going to get this red on the brush if it kills me. There we are. Little feathery bits and pieces of cloud. And as long as it's all still wet, it will let me work it. 
you get to know the outer edges would be very dangerous at the moment because the outer edges are starting to dry and I would find that I'd put paint on them and it would push what's there away and I would land up with some really, really dodgy cauliflowers, I think, so I just need to be careful. This is lovely and wet still down here, so that's bleeding quite nicely. Still wet down here, so it's bleeding quite nicely. There we are. How are we doing? We're still, still managing to move some of it around. This is still wet. Just keep your eye on it. Know who's in charge. Know who's the boss. Don't let it be the boss of you. And when it starts to turn on you, stop. There you go, see that's dry. That's dry. So I'd be very, very wary of that. Are we dry down there? This is still wet and this is still mobile. This is mm, 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 just, just. Not too much more, Sharon, not too much more. Starting to dry. There you see. So that, this is dry out here now, so I need to leave it alone. I'll get hard marks, hard lines there. I don't want it. So I think really I've reached the limit of that paper's tolerance now. I don't think I can do any more. I know when I'm beat and that paper now, if I look at it, has only just got a sheen on it, just in that middle area there. But all the way around the outside, it looks matte to my eye when I look at it sideways against the light. So this is the point that you need to be aware of and stop working the outside. You can still twiddle and fiddle here, but leave it alone. There you go, we have a bit of a sunset. Um, as I said earlier on in the week, everybody says, oh, you ought to paint a sky a day, yada, yada, yada. And it's it's easier said than done, isn't it? Um, they're difficult. <laughs> they're difficult. And there's no two ways about it. And of course, every day you look at them, they're different. And you have to think about that, don't you? Because in all honesty, sometimes when you look out there and you see that sky and you think that you want to paint it, if you actually went for it the way you see it, it would look a right old mess on the paper, wouldn't it? Let's be quite honest about that. It would really be a bit of a scumbly mess. Um, nature, when it came to skies, is very good at colour and very good at random, but not very tidy. So it doesn't appeal to the housewife in me, but there you go. Um, this afternoon we're going to paint another so we've had a go haven't we at um, we've done the evening skies and the sunset and a summer sky and the mare's tails and this time I really want to go into this and paint a stormy sky and give you some real atmosphere something a bit sort of exciting and and you know a bit different so fancy a stormy sky should we go for it all right I'm going to switch the camera around, okay? And then we can get cracking. I want to create this afternoon something here like this. If you want drama in a sky, I hope you can see this because, of course, the problem now is that the lights um, affect my iPad. So two secs, let, just, let me just make sure that you can see what I'm looking at here without the light shining. If you want a focal point here and here, this is um, Brimham Rocks up in Yorkshire, and you're looking into this area, bringing the sky into it 
in this fashion really does focus your attention in the middle of the picture. It really, really does. You're looking into this now and you're seeing this area of light and that gives you this fantastic contrast against the light. And we're imagining here that we're standing, we've had a bit of a nice bright sunny day because we can see the blue sky here and little slithers of it here and the clouds are approaching from behind us. So as they come billowing from behind us and over our heads and into our future over there looking towards the horizon they're going to get smaller and this is why you get this this closing this smaller space here a lowering sky good word for it really it's coming from above us and behind us this color here is very good to throw into a sky this is raw sienna and it's a good color to throw into a sky because it gives it that bruised look that look and that feeling of something's going to happen and this really works for you if you've got a sky like this in a snow scene because it, it says to you categorically it says to you it's going to snow it's that feeling of waiting just waiting something's going to happen therefore got a nice clean piece of paper and I'm only going to use three colors and my colours for today, here we go, raw sienna, and then I've got burnt umber, and I have ultramarine. Now the paints I'm using, people have been asking me about my paints. These are Shin Han, and it's Shin as in your leg, and Han, your hand without the D. They're Korean paints, and they are professional watercolours. They are extra fine, they are light fast, they are archival, so you've got a hundred years use out of them before they start to fade or disappear on you. They're all transparent, so there are colours there which, you know, you and I would be expecting to be claggy and cluttery and large and opaque on the paper, and these are transparent. They're also organic. So that means that the chemical colours, paints grey, alizarin crimson, the thalos, they're not there. They're all organic paints. If you're interested in those, I have just put a message up on Artist Demo Days and I have put an order form up there and the colour charts for you to have a look at so that you can order them with 10% off if you like them. The only company that stock them, to the best of my knowledge in this company, are Jackson's. Paper-wise, I'm using £140 Bockingford, and it's the, not the extra rough, but it's the rough surface. And I need to make sure that I'm well taped down because I'm really going to make a mess with some water and I don't want this to warp and to buckle and to escape. And if I tape it down well, I know that when it dries, it will dry, oops, it will, sorry, it will dry and it will be taut again. As it shrinks, it will shrink up and it will be nice and tight again. I have my three colours in my palette, ready and waiting. Colours in waiting. And a cloth next to me, because I will use that for dabbing my brush and for mopping up spills. And I will be using my number eight sable and my 24 millimetre hake. Two of my favourite brushes. Love these. I'll also put a link on the page to my brushes, the brushes that I use. These are great. Now the other brushes that are fantastic, if you don't like the Kalinsky Sable, go for the SAA. They make brushes which are um, synthetic sable and they're lovely too. They're, they hold plenty, they've got good fat bellies and they hold plenty of paint. You have options as an artist. The first thing we need to do here without a shadow of a doubt is throw some water on this paper because I don't paint anything like this without having water because this gives me breathing space. It gives me panic time. It gives me time to stand back and go <laughs> 
and, and just have one of those moments. We all have moments when we're painting and if your paper's wet, you have the time to have a moment. If I went straight in with colour and something went wrong or I needed to readdress something that I'd done, I wouldn't have the time. I would land up with brush strokes. I know I want light in the middle of my picture. I know that I want this golden colour around the light. So I'm going to come in. Please be brave because I have to tell you, watercolour is a bit of a stinker. It always dries up 30% lighter than it goes on. And particularly now because I'm putting so much water on the page. So that's diluting my colour before I even breathe, isn't it? I'm just putting it and it's all going to come in and focus into this area here. And then I want to clean off and I want to drop in these blue areas. So if I come in and I just grab a little bit of my French ultramarine, I'm not going to put an awful lot of this in here, but I'd like a bit in there. And I'm going to try and leave just a white slither down here. And I'm going to take a little skim of this and just drop it in here. So that we have this idea that it was a bright sunny day, but it's all going to go away. There we are, just a little bit in there. Don't like the shapes I've just made, so I'm going to nuzzle it with the brush like that. That's it. And then it might be an idea just to drop a little slither in down here somewhere. So I'm really, really using the minimum amount of colour on my brush here. And I want to just drop a little bit in there. Your paper will always dry up more quickly around these four corners and the edges, so just watch it. And if you fear that that's going to be the case, you can always come back in on the clear areas and just pop a bit more water in. I want to mix my storm colour and I'm going to do that with French Ultramarine. I'm going to need a goodly amount of this. New palette, look how it's beading. I said earlier on the week if this is a problem for you, um, it's a good idea to go over something like this with either a scouring, a little a green scourer, or use um, a magic sponge. Now that is Burnt Umber and French Ultramarine. And with that, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put some in there. I want more brown. I want it to be quite a stormy, stormy colour. So more of the Burnt Umber. And I'm going to pull my cut. And I haven't mixed that so well. So that my Burnt Umber and my French Ultramarine sit there and mix on the paper. So don't be afraid of doing that either. I want to bring some dark into this area. And I'm quite, quite happy to have that brown colour in my sky. I'd like this to be a bit paler down here, so I do that just by putting more water in the mix, in here. And I'd like a little bit of yellow to halo that the golden colour, so I'm coming in with my smaller brush. And I'm just introducing that. Like this. I've lost my yellow down here, so let's go in and just throw a little more of that in. I'm calling it yellow, everybody, but it is actually raw sienna like that. Keep it wet, keep it wet, it's still wet so it's still moving for me, that's lovely and you know it's wet because it's shiny and it's as simple as that, it's shiny so I know I can move it. Here's my brown, my burnt umber and my French ultramarine mix again. This I want to put some dark in the middle of that, like that. And I need some dark over here that. 
This is granulating nicely. Can you see the, the way that it's all sort of settling and nestling into the paper? So that will give me some good effects. I think I'm going to need to start using my smaller brush for a minute. So I'm coming back to this and I'm mixing myself my French Ultramarine and my Burnt Umber. So just keep mixing as you go and as I say if you don't have a really good mix on the brush that's not the end of the world. I want to come in and drop some of the blue in there and I'm going to pull some through here side of the brush look. Keep this movement going all of the time. If you want to soften anything, rinse, dab it on your cloth, get rid of the extra water and then come in. Ooh, that's granulating and the colours are separating. I'm going to leave that alone. Because as you watch it, things are happening as you watch. So just, just go with it, go with it. Go with the flow. And I'm picking up the, my grey colour again and I'm just going to put some up through here. And this is a thinner colour, more water on that, just a bit thinner. I'm going to pull some through here as well. And as long as that's wet, as long as that's still shiny and it's still all moving, you're safe. You're still safe. I've picked up a lot of wet on my brush, so all I'm doing is patting it dry on my cloth so that I can come back. Because moving colour about is okay, but we don't want to move too much water and wet and mess around. So like this, if it's too dark, don't keep going into your water and dabbing it and dobbing it. Come in and just tap it on your cloth so that you can just pull the faintest, faintest colour about. And there'll be little clouds here in this area caught by this light bleached out absolutely bleached out so you see that's very wet so there's an awful lot of wet on my brush just come in and tap tap get rid of it this is all right i don't think i want quite that much wet in the middle of that so if i just Lighten that up a bit by lifting some out, that works. This is all granulating nicely. It's still wet, it's still shiny. So again, I can come in here and I can mix my color up. And the depth of color is down to how much paint you use. So now I'm going into really, really thick color. I'm going to get rid of that in a minute because I don't like that blob. So just hold fire I'll manipulate it in a minute. Where else do I want some real dark? Oh, over here. The whole thing to just converge into the middle of my sky. That's too much and it's too dark. So choices I have is get rid of the paint on the brush and then I come in and I manipulate it and I move it that way. I said I didn't like that blob there. So if I rinse and I, I get rid of the water, don't pull it out, push it back. Push it back and it softens it. It softens it. If you want to lift out, you can use the side of your brush to pull colour out. So you do that, keep it clean, keep it clean. I'd like some lighter areas in amongst here. So clean, dry, thirsty brush now. And we can come in, clean and dry, and thirsty brush. But once you've done that, you've got to be careful because of course now I can't go back in and really paint very well there because it's a bit dry. Let's try. If I just take up a teeny bit Oh, it's still going to have it. God bless it. Oh, it's good, isn't it? It's good. There we go. You can drop in little tiny areas. So yes, as long as we're still shiny. And once it's, it stops spreading when you put it on the paper, 
I'll just see if I can find a bit where it's, I've wet it too well today. It's all working. I don't like these, that knobbly bit there, so I'm going to get hold of it, pull it back. And this is too blobby, so I'm going to get hold of it and again pull it. And if you want light, residual light shining up underneath these areas, thirsty brush, really dry it, and then come in with thirsty brush and lift the light out. I'm going to do that here as well. It almost looks now as though I've got two eyes and a frowning face. <laughs> but if you imagine that you were going to come into something like that now and you were going to put your tree or a mountainside here with your rocks or a figure standing there, you've got a very, very good converging sky and it's just coming down, down, down pointing your eye to exactly where you want somebody to look, exactly where you want them to look. I just want to... I just put that all over my fingers. So I'm starting to have to be careful because you can see, I can see that that is now thinking about getting to the cauliflower stage. So you've got to be very, very, very wary now. This is starting to dry. And if I were to put water into that now, particularly in these areas here, I know that this, the water, would push the colour away and I would land up with cauliflowers in these drier areas. I know it would happen. Cauliflowers are water or paint pushing its way in to drying paint. So this is now drying and if I put water in it would finger through into this drying paint and I'd land up with all these blossoming cauliflowers, lines. That's one of the reasons why we really really wet it first but working this is working really well I've got super granulation down here and down here you can see it that's fabulous here I hope you can see that and just be wary I know that if I were to put my finger on that, it would leave a finger mark and I'd bring my finger away and I'd have paint on my finger. And that's the time when this shine, this is still wet, goes away, that we, we land up with problems. I thought we might have a little play with some paint. Now I know we've been playing with paint all week, but this time I want us to be really brave and use that paint in a very, very strong fashion. You wouldn't really be able to do this if you were using water from pans. We really, really need to have tube paint for this because I'm talking about using it very thickly to the point where we're looking at mm, more than single cream in texture. So what am I going to do? I'm going to paint you an evening sky. A sky that's darkening, you've still got the afterglow in the bottom of the sky and it's come out to night time and the stars are coming out. Are you ready for this? Because here we go. This time I want to paint a night sky. It's an evening sky darkening tonight so I'd like to have a little bit of light, residual light down here in the bottom of the sky. I'm using my Bockingford again, £140, 300 GSM and I have taped it down well so that it's not going to escape because of course all of these techniques use quite a bit of water. And the colours I want to use today, Payne's Grey, use quite a bit of that you can see from the size of the tube and Prussian blue and some Naples yellow. Now Naples yellow will be our lighter colour down in the bottom of the sky that sort of very scrumptious warm yellow here but not too vibrant 
And the Prussian blue and the Payne's grey I'm going to mix together. They make a very nice, very, very good midnight blue, but you have to use the paint very thickly. We'll also be looking to use a white, so a gouache or a white paint, whatever. And I need a little bit of credit card, shopping card, whatever. And I'm going to use this lid. This is a lid from my Mr. Sox's Pussycats cat milk. Um, and I use this because I don't want white, the white paint in my palette. It leaves a residue and it leaves a mark and it doesn't come away. So if I use this for my paints, if it's white and gouache, then when I've used it, I can simply throw that away and that's the end of the story. Use milk bottle tops, whatever, something that's easy and very disposable. Now, for the first time ever here, I'm not actually going to wet the paper. I want to make sure that the colours stay as vibrant and as dark as I can possibly make them. I'm going to be using, once again, my Rosemary's 24mm Hake. Absolutely adore these. Goat's hair. Nice and springy and soft. And the difference between these and a brush, a nylon brush that you might want to use, like this, this will leave marks in your work. As you draw it across the paper, it will leave a definite brush mark. These are less inclined to do so. And that is why I don't ever use a nylon brush for my background. You'll see once we get cracking. I want to mix these two together, but I'm not going to do them immediately because I'd like to get the yellow sky in the bottom first. I'm just coming in here and laying in my yellow. So that's my Naples yellow. Paint it, make sure it's nice and smooth and it's nice and shiny. And the reason for that is because I want that to be wet. This is just water that I'm pulling across that transition area there. I think I'd like that to be a little bit brighter. So I'm just coming in and using a little bit more of my yellow. Naples yellow, that is a beautiful colour. And that's water through there, it's wet. You'll see why in a second. I now want to come into this and with just enough water to make this a very thick mix. That's my Prussian blue and my lovely Payne's Grey. I'm going to use that very, very darkly. All right, so that I don't have marks and lines in my sky. Thick colour and that is why I wanted the water so that I don't get a hard edge there. It, lit, it allows us to go in and work it. So there's my blue. And I'm going to turn the lights off because I don't want, don't like that shine on the, on the picture. Hold on. See if we can manage like that in natural daylight for a minute. Yes, we can. So lots of colour. Lots of colour. If you do get your brush mark, don't stress it because we're going to work into that in a minute. I want to clean my brush completely, utterly, totally nice clean brush. And I'm going to get rid of the excess water and then I want to just gently, gently work through that area. Clean it again, get rid of the excess water, and then I'm going to brush right through to the bottom. And my plan here is to pick up a tiny bit of the blue because I'm and get dab it on the cloth so that your brush isn't overwhelmed with colour because now I'm just going to come in and introduce those little clouds that we get in the bottom of the sky. And I'm going to take a number eight, my sable brush, dab it dry, and then just come in underneath to soften and gently, gently, gently take the bottoms out of the clouds, just to soften them. 
like that. And then through here, if we go back into the dark blue, this transitional area to bring it down and to make the two come together, dark blue, I'm just going to lay in. of dark clouds through there. Now what you can do now is clean your brush and really really dry it. So it's going in the cloth and I'm squeezing it. You want a really really thirsty brush. Bear in mind all of this is still shiny, it's still working, it's still shiny. And now I'm coming in with a thirsty brush and if I lift that out I'm just lifting colour out. Your brush has got to be clean and it's got to be very dry. And that gives the idea and the impression of light shining up from down here where the sun's set, shining up and giving you light to those clouds. Right, I've dried that and it's worth noting at this point that watercolour will always dry up to a third lighter. That's the reason why you want to make sure this is as dark and as thickly painted as you possibly can. When you're looking at clouds like this, if you had wanted this bright gold to have shone up underneath to light the bottoms of the clouds, you must not do it at this previous stage where it's still damp because it was starting to dry and you would have found that it would have created cauliflowers and that's when we start getting into a mess with our skies. If I take a little bit of this golden yellow now and just drop it in, I'm just going to put it in like that. Let me bring you in so that you can perhaps see a little easier. I'm just dropping that gently into my clouds, like this. Not too much water. There we go. And that will be just enough to give the hint of that sort of residual glow of the sun shining up from down below. If you need to blend it, rinse, clean your brush, dry your brush and then just with a damp brush come in and soften. Don't do it with a wet brush. Water, yeah, I know it's called watercolour, but watercolour is the thing that destroys your painting. So just be very, very careful with it, always, because it runs away with you and itself. The next thing we want to do here is take a little bit of white gouache and you really, really don't need a lot. So I'm only going for about, hmm, I'm being mean now. Something like this. Because I just want it to be single cream consistency. And the brush that I'm going to use is going to be this. This is a half inch coma. Again, another rosemary's brush. And the reason it's called a coma is because, let me try and get you close to this so that you can see what I'm wittering on about. A coma is split, all the top third of the hairs are split like a comb. And then that means that it gives you quite an irregular brush mark. But it's also the most fantastic brush because it's springy and it's bouncy. And I can use this very nicely against my piece of card. The key to a good splatter or spatter, depending on which part of the country you come from, is to flick straight down. And the closer you get to the paper and the smaller your, splat your, your movement, the smaller your dots will be. If you come up high and you flick like this hard, you'll get big, big marks. What we don't want to do in the sky, unless we've got a reason for it, is to flick sideways. Because uh, we all tend to do this, this movement. And really don't do it, because you'll get directional splatter. 
and you'll land up with teardrop shapes and your sky will be full of teardrops. If that does happen to you, you just have to get hold of them with the side of your hand and swipe outwards and they become comets or rain. So that's, it's not the end of the world, but it's a good idea, downwards. Let's have a little practice with it. So we want water and my water is still dirty, so I think that's okay because then it might help you to see where I'm at and what I've got. So I just want this single cream consistency. It's got to be thick enough to show the gouache, but it's got to be thin enough that it's manipulable. Manipulate. You can manipulate. Put it this way. You can manipulate it. Got the wrong teeth in today. And then I'm going to flick down. Let me start over here. Gently, gently, gently gives you little, little stars. Little stars. Let's just come right across the sky, infilling with little stars, a galaxy. There you go. And if you go like this, you've got total control. It's not going up the walls. It's not all over my board. I'm, I know exactly where I'm going with it and how it's working. So that's super cool. If you do, by any chance, get a big splidgy splodge, let's see if we can think right there's your milky way all right if you do get a big splodge there are things you can do with it if you were to take a fine brush a zero brush a rigger brush something like that this is my rigger a rigger is a long fine brush like this developed by Turner for the rigging on ships and if I take something like that and I get hold of one of these stars right in the middle of it and then I pull it, give me a comet. Shazam. Do you want to come in and have a look? Comet. Now something else that we can do here if we're in grief, let me quickly clean my brush, don't be gouache in it because it sticks around the ferrule and then gives you grief cleaning up later. If you land up with a splidge and a splodge and you don't know what to do with it, so I'm going to throw one in over here. Oops, okay. Don't want that. And again, I'm going to tighten you up so that you can come in and watch what I'm doing with it. Paint on your rigger brush. And I'm going to come right into the middle of it and I'm going to pull that down lift off as you come down and now you come into the middle of it and you come straight up not as high not as long now we come into this and we quarter it always come in from the middle just got to sit sideways so that i can do it come in from the middle and come out and then the next thing we're going to do is take this is again a number two brush and I just want to come into the middle of that I'm going to add a bit more of the white and I'm just going to do that nudge it, budge it and smudge it water and now just a damp brush and come round the edges again. Don't go into the colour and pull it out. You know my blending technique. Come into the colour and you say, hello paint, my name's brush and I'm going to stroke you. Keep the brush clean. So you've got this lovely kind of halo. And then I'm going to come back with more paint and I want to quarter what I have now, turn it into eights. So there. And here, and there, and up here. And because watercolour is such a stinker and it bleeds out the way it does and it fades out so much, more of the white paint, and it's still all wet in there, drop that into the middle of your star so that you're reinforcing. You've still got a bit of a halo around it. And what I would like to do is just maybe thicken up this edge of it. Try and get yours straight. I, I went wonky there. Doesn't matter. But that is a very easy way to create yourself 
a Christmas star maybe. Maybe that's the way you might want to do your Christmas card this year with the Christmas star shining for all the world to see. So we've got comets, we've got stars, job done, easy.